Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the table that we just made, but we're going to augment the structure somewhat. What I'd ideally like to do at this point is I'm going to change this so that each of the table cells is going to display a picture of a bird, but I'm going to make a heading at the top of different areas of my table that is going to identify the region of birds and group them together in that way. So let me show you how we're going to augment our page. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to have in my second row all images appearing of birds. I'll just copy the cell and paste it in and then we'll change some of the syntax. In addition, instead of having the separate table headings, I just want to have one heading. So I'm going to change the text here so that it says Western Region Birds and I'm going to get rid of my two additional th tags. If we save the page now and we look in the browser, you can see that my table looks like this. I do have the three TD tags displaying the images as I wanted, but the table heading is not going across the entire width of the table. And the reason why is because I need to use something called column spanning. This is an attribute that allows you to expand a data cell into multiple columns in the table. So right here, I just really want to have one header that spans across this entire area. What we'll do is we'll come into the code that we currently have, and I'm going to add an attribute onto the th. I'm going to tell it to column span, and then I'm going to say equals, and then I'll tell it the number of columns that I want to span. In this case, I want to span three columns. If we save the page now and go look in the browser, you can see that now the cell is spanning across the entire duration of our page. This is how I want my page to look. Let's add a little bit more content to our table so that we can practice using the column spans. In the interest of time, I'm just going to select these two table rows and I'll copy them and I'll paste them in and I'll change the text. I'll also change the names of the images so that I can pull up some alternate images and I'll add some alt tags that are appropriate for these images. Now when we save and we look in the browser, you can see that my second th tag is also spanning across the entire width of the table. Then I break into the images. In addition to column spanning, you can also row span your table and sometimes that might be something that you'll need to do. Let's create one more table row. I'm going to copy the row that we have and paste it in. I'll change the birds that are going to display. Now instead of having the birds display in this way, I'd actually like to create a new cell here that says endangered and then I'm going to have these pictures display a little bit smaller and they will appear in the next few cells. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut this image of the bird for right now. In this TD, we're going to put the word endangered. And then in the next TD tag, I'm going to paste in the first image that, that we had from the first cell. Because I want these images to display a little bit smaller, I'm going to change the width of the image. I'm going to do that for the remaining three images that I have. And we're going to take the image that's in the third table cell and we're going to remove it from the TD as well. I'll just delete the TD tag here. So what I have is in this third table row, I have two TD tags. The first TD tag has the word endangered. The second TD tag contains three images that we've scaled down. If we save our page now and look in the browser, the file looks like this. You can see how the formatting of my table has been thrown off and that's because this table cell, these images are inline elements they're displaying side by side. They are now the widest table cell in our table and they're forcing this second column to be this wide. I actually want to column span this table cell over so that it takes up this additional area right here. Let's do that next. I'm going to go into the second TD and we'll use this column span of two 
because I only want to span two cells. I'll save and if we go back into the browser you can see that now the formatting of my table has been updated with the changes that we just made. Now, in addition to what's displaying now, I'm going to create one more row, but I only want it to be taking up the second and third columns. So I'll have the word endangered here, and then we're going to make a table row that's going to describe these three birds. We'll do that next. We're going to have to augment our code to make this happen. So I'm going to come back to my third row right here. What we're going to do here is we're going to copy this third table row. I'm going to paste this into my document and what we're going to do is we're going to remove the table cell that says endangered and we're going to change this to have a description of our endangered birds. So this is what our page looks like so far. You can see that it's not working the way that we want and that's because we need to add some code to tell this table cell to row span down so that it takes up two rows. We're also going to actually move this table cell so that it exists inside of this TR so it'll fill this space to the right of where it says endangered. Let's make that change now. We'll go into our browser. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to grab this table cell and we're going to move it into the table row that appears above. Then I'm going to add the row span attribute to the first table cell and I'm going to tell it to row span down two spaces. If I save now and we go look in the browser, you can see that now the endangered cell is taking up two rows. Now this table cell is a little short and that's because we need to column span it so that it actually takes up the space of two columns. We'll make that change right now. We'll column span this too and if we save now you can see that now I have a table where this cell takes up two rows and then these two cells take up two columns. So by utilizing the column span and row span in the appropriate manner, you're able to create a more complex layout with your table cells.